rapid fire 28 all total tips for new grads in their job search or starting out your new job. This is the Work in Sports Podcast. It's a Monday on a Wednesday. This isn't a fan question. This is just a topic that I was inspired to cover that I think can help all of you. And here's where it came from. I like to look ahead on my schedule a little bit, about a a week, let's say. I live out of my calendar. Everything is booked. Every minute is accounted for. That's how I stay organized. So I'm looking about a week out now. And what do I see next Wednesday? I see my youngest child, my fifth grader, has his fifth grade graduation. These are big moments. A fifth grader ascending to middle school. These are important times. And we sit there and he gets to have his moment. And I thought to myself, wow, it's springtime. And that means a lot of you are graduating college and going into the real world, which is even scarier than going into junior high. A little bit. So many of you are prepared to get your degree in hand and move that tassel from left to right or right to left. I don't know. Who cares? And your reality is going to be here. Some of you are really prepped and ready and and have your job lined up or have your summer planned and you're ahead of the game. Congratulations. That's awesome. A lot of you are not in that boat. I was not in that boat. I did not have something lined up by the time I graduated. It was like all hands on deck. Let's get into this process post-graduation. So I thought it would be a valuable exercise today to have a discussion based around job search tips for new grads. I actually have 20 tips plus a whole bonus section for those of you who are overachievers that are about to start new opportunities this summer. First thing, setting a mentality that your job search is now a job. Your focus for the longest time was being a student, executing, learning, doing internships, gaining experience. As I say a lot of times on the show, you're in an acquisition phase. You're acquiring knowledge and experience. Now it's time to start to put that to work. You have to focus this in like it's in a job. And what I mean by that is tip number two, get into a regular workflow. If you're working a regular job, you'd be Monday to Friday, nine to five. You now have to consider that your new schedule and it's all focused around job search activities. Maybe you don't need 40 hours a week, but it is a job and it is your focus right now. It is your primary focus. So make yourself in a routine of Monday through Friday doing work to find a new job and all those ancillary activities that get you there, which brings us to step number step number three, develop a job searching system that works for you. So here's an example. An hour each morning, I'm going to look at and consider new jobs posted. I'm going to go on to workinsports.com. I'm going to see what's new out there. I'm going to see what matches my skill set. I'm going to set up certain save searches for terms like coordinator that I know are related to entry-level jobs. I'm going to look for marketing coordinator jobs or social media coordinator jobs. That's the first hour. Next hour, I'm going to work on refining my resume to to really line up with any of those jobs that I plan on applying for. Next hour after that, I'm going to do all the applications. Next hour after that, I'm going to do work on some networking outreach. I'm going to reach out to some people that I've made contact with over the years, or I think that might be aligned with some of these jobs that I may be applying for. Next hour, I'm going to review interview questions and how I might answer certain common interview questions. Next hour, I'm going to read interview uh, industry sites to keep up on what is happening. That's just a shell schedule that I built in 30 seconds. You can do better, but make yourself a schedule that you can repeat and execute upon so that you are productive each day towards your end goal of getting a job. Work the process. Now, step number four, set goals for the numbers of jobs that you apply for daily or weekly or monthly. Give yourself a goal. Now, this can seem arbitrary, but I like you to have some vision that you're aiming for. I don't want this to become a check the box activity. Like I said, I was going to apply for 30 jobs. So I just applied for 30 jobs. I still want you to have as much intention as possible. They have to be jobs that you are qualified for, that you are truly interested in, that you would follow through on. And maybe that number is, I want to apply for five really strong targeted jobs each week. Great. Set that kind of a goal, set that kind of an intention, and then guide yourself towards it. You got to make sure you hit these benchmarks and adjust if you need to. If you start doing that with five and you're like, you know what? I think I should make it 10. I think I should ramp up a little bit. I think I can do that. As long as you're still customizing your resume, as long as you're still making your cover letter fit for that specific job, as long as you're doing all of these steps with intention, 
Scale that up, scale that down, but give yourself a goal. Number five, develop your 30-second elevator pitch for yourself. Who are you? What value do, do you bring to an organization? Why would somebody consider hiring you? Work this, refine this, practice it in the mirror so that if you do bump into somebody or you do go to a local networking event, you can speak to yourself with confidence. If you get that opportunity, you just don't want to waste it. So refine your elevator pitch. I have never, I'm just going to be totally straightforward with this, I've never been great at the elevator pitch. I tend to just speak off the cuff. That is where I'm more comfortable. Even if it's just getting a couple bullet points you want to be able to hit on, and then it's always a little bit fluid in the middle of those bullet points, that's fine. But give yourself something so that you can articulate your value to an organization, why you're worthy of being hired, and what you would bring, I think is extremely valuable for this time period that you're in right now, which brings us to number six, clean up your social media accounts. Every single place you apply to, before they bring you in for even a phone interview or any kind of pre-screening or anything like that, they're going to check your social media accounts. They're going to look through your Twitter. They're going to look through your Insta. They're going to look at your, well, Snap's not as helpful, but they're going to look at your LinkedIn, all of that. Clean up as much as you can. Make it as professional as you can. Don't set up separate accounts that are like, this is where I'm business and this is where I'm party. Don't do that. They're going to discover that. It's not hard to figure find people on social media. Just clean everything up to the best of your ability. Go back through your history. Is there anything in there that could really be considered poor in poor taste or unprofessional? Get rid of it. Do your best to make your presentation as positive as it could be and look at your LinkedIn profile to maximize all the fields, completely build it out, make sure it looks top, top notch because that is the first place people are going to go as they make decisions about you. Number seven, Reconnect with people you've worked with, interned with, with, or learned from. When I said you're making out your schedule for the day and you're giving yourself an hour for networking activities, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. If you've interned with somebody, let's say you were in college at SMU. I'm just picking schools out and you did an internship with the Dallas Cowboys your junior year. And then now you're graduating. Think about all those people that you interned with. They might have been at different schools. They, they could have been doing it over their summer break, and they could be from BU, Boston University, or they could have been from University of Washington or UCLA or anywhere else. And now they're out there getting jobs. They're out there finding opportunities. This is a great time for you to start to reconnect with those people. Hey, John, remember we interviewed, interned with the Dallas Cowboys, just wanted to reach out and connect and see what's happening with you. I'm hitting the job market too. What, what's happening with you? These are opportunities for you to build your network because networking is not just vertical, like towards a manager or decision maker. It's also horizontal across to those people that you've worked with and experienced life with. Use this time to actively reach out to people and start to reconnect and build that network of people that you have connections with. And it can be former employers. It can be former uh, professors. It could be really anything, but just be aggressive in this, this phase and start to really build those networking connections and build them back up if they've lost some momentum. Uh, number eight, check local sports teams for networking events, for job fairs, or there's local community events that are job fairs and they might have a sports team there. Be very aware of where these events are happening because then that's when you can get FaceTime with people and learn about the opportunities that are out there. Number nine, consult your school's alumni network or career center and continue to add new people to your pool of, of networking connections. One thing I love to say all the time is that if, um, you go through and you're looking at LinkedIn and one of the first places you, you should look to start making networking connections are those people that graduated from your program. If you went to University of Florida and you graduated with a degree in sports journalism, look for other people that graduated from the University of Florida with a degree in sports journalism and start reaching out to them aggressively and start to build a conversation and a network there too. That could be a mentor. That could be somebody that really wants to give back to their program that they have some affinity for. There's a good time to start researching that and then also leveraging uh, whatever you, tools you can get out of your career center. Number 10, this is one of my favorites. You should build a top 10 list of your dream companies to work for. ESPN, New England Sports Network, NBC Sports Boston. These are all my kind of lists because sports media from Boston. You know, like I can start to say, these are some dream organizations I'd want to work with. If you build out that list and say, these are the dream places I'd like to work. I'm not saying you're going to get that in your first job, but you can start to prioritize options. And even further, you can start to network within those organizations now so that when you are looking for your next job and your next opportunity down the line, you've already started to build some relationships in these dream organizations that you'd like to work for. Building out your top 10 list 
It could be fluid over time, but this is where you aggressively want to start networking and building connections because someday you want to be there. That's the big goal. If you're like, I want to work for the Boston Celtics one day, why wouldn't you start reaching out to some people there now and saying, I'm a recent graduate. I'm trying to learn more about this side of the industry. I'm breaking in. Would you love to just connect and continue to learn more from you and from your experiences working with the Celtics? Why not do that? So good exercise to go through that. Number 11, go through the thought exercise of what kind of a salary range would be important for you. You have to know your own needs for salary. And you are the only one that knows your true expenses. How much do you spend on rent? How much do you spend on your utility bills? How much do you spend on cable and, you know, website subscriptions and all those other things? And from that, you can start to build out what a reasonable salary would be so that when an offer comes in or when a discussion starts about what is a salary range that you require or when you're applying for a job and it's asking you for some of that, you have at least some research and knowledge of what would be needed. I had this experience one time where I was uh, a finalist for a job, for a vice president's job, uh, for a, a website, and it was back in Seattle, a city that I used to live in, and it looked like a really neat opportunity. Really neat? That's a weird phrase, but neato. Um, but it looked like a really cool opportunity. I was a finalist for the position. They gave me a salary number, and I thought on paper it sounded really good really good. And then I went back and started to do some of the research. I started to figure out cost of living in Seattle because it had changed since I had last lived there. I started to figure out what my expenses would be, school, everything, all these different things. And I was like, whoa, I'm going to be getting like $100 a month that isn't already accounted for. That's not going to cut it. Now, don't get greedy. Don't start getting crazy on me. Like we're not, there's an entry level jobs you're looking for. You can't expect the moon, but you need to start to have an, an understanding or an idea of what it would take to get you in a good position a profitable situation. And then in that exercise, number 11, number 12, I mean, sorry, also go through that, the thought exercise of where would you be willing to relocate? If you want to break into our industry, it doesn't always happen right under your feet. It doesn't always happen right in the market that you're in. There might become opportunities. So you have to go through this thought process now and saying, okay, if a job opened up in Tennessee for the Tennessee Titans, would I be interested in that? Okay, maybe I would. Why would I? What do I like about this area? Does it meet my expectations for where I'd want to get started? What is the cost of living? What do those numbers start to look like? Giving yourself a little bit of time to walk through this process can start to build your list of, I wouldn't want to go there, so I'm not going to entertain that. I would want to go here because it looks like it could be interesting to me. It can't just be, let's wing it. And I did this. I just was winging it. Like I got a job offer in Atlanta and was like, cool, let's go to Atlanta. I'm not saying it was wrong. I loved it. It worked out great. It also could have worked out really poorly. So going through that thought exercise now can make you a little bit more confident in those jobs that you do end up applying for. That's 12 to get us started. Take a deep breath. Let's move into the next batch. There are more than 17,000 active sports jobs on workinsports.com, but you only need one. Our iMatch tool will scan your resume and find the best matches for your skill set and expertise. Check out workinsports.com today to get started. Number 13, now we're into the phase of applying for jobs. So that was a little bit of your prep and setup. Now I'm talking about your application and kind of process. Do not just start blasting your resume out everywhere to every company that is hiring. Go through this process with intention. Where are you a match? Where are you really interested? Because not only is it Brad practice just fired out everywhere, but every team, league, sports organization, affiliated business in the sports industry, most if not all, utilize an applicant tracking system which tracks inbound applications. And I'm able to see if you've applied for every job I've ever posted. So if I'm the Indianapolis Colts and you apply for one of my jobs, I can go through and say, yeah, they've applied for 10 jobs in the last six months. And that to me is a red flag that you don't want to just be in this particular role that I need, you just want to work for my organization. So it doesn't scream out you're qualified and interested in this particular position. You just want to be here. And that's not a good process. So don't just start applying for everything's out there. Be intentional. Know that there are jobs that match your skill set and that you would be a good fit for and that you would be happy there. And that still should be a greater than one list. Like there's going to be jobs for you to apply for that fit your skill set and that you are interested in. And if not, then it's on you to up your skill set. If you're not finding things that match your skill set, it's time to reallocate your, your time towards skills development. Number 14, 
Spend quality time customizing each application you submit and each resume. This goes again to your the intentions of your process. If you set the time in your schedule to say, this is how I'm going to manage myself, this is how I'm going to organize my day and my week, you're going to build in time to customize your resume and you're going to make sure that it fits for the skill set needed for each particular job. Because one resume doesn't cover every potential opportunity out there that you are a match for. Some may emphasize a certain skill set and you want to move that bullet point up to your top bullet point under a job, or you want to add in that knowledge that you do have, but maybe it wasn't on your base resume. But this job, it's important for. You want to make sure you make those moves. You want to customize your cover letter to make sure it fits the tone and the needs of that job and it tells a good story to convince them who you are. Putting in this effort for each application shows intention in your process and gives you a better chance of being a match for that job. And that's what we're going for. If you're a good match, you get through the applicant tracking system screening, you get through those first automated processes, and you get a phone call from a real human wanting to talk to you and see if you're a good match for their job. That's what we're going for. So focus on that intentional process of customizing your resume. Number 15, proofread your resume and cover letter. There is nothing that gets you faster than a no pile than a sloppy construct, sloppily constructed resume and cover letter. I have seen, I would say, 10 to 15% of the resumes that I see applying for jobs that I've posted over the years have grammatical errors, spelling errors, poor choices of phrasing, and immediately somebody goes to the no problem column. They're just no. Because if you can't have that attention for detail on something this important, you're not going to have attention to detail in the job that I need you for. And if you don't have attention to detail, that leads to mistakes. Focus in on the proofreading and the grammar and the, and the process before you deliver. And if you need to have somebody else look at it to get a fresh set of eyes on it, please do. But make sure you take that time. Number 16, follow the directions in the employer's job ad. In in a a job ad, in a job description, in a job posting, they're going to tell you the process. No phone calls, please. If they say that, don't call. If they tell you that they need to apply on the site or they tell you you need to email this address, do what they're telling you to. Following directions at this point is important because breaking that process, again, shows you're not really paying attention. And that's a big problem. Number 17, keep tabs on where you've applied and the outcome. Build yourself a spreadsheet. The jobs you've applied for, the titles, the contacts, the each step with little notes or things like that, because invariably somebody's going to call you or somebody's going to reach out or somebody's going to email you and you're going to be lo- losing the thread on, wait, what was this one again? What's happened here? What's going on? You can also do some self-auditing and you can start to see every one of these uh Jobs that I've been applying for, I'm falling out at this point after the first phone interview, or they're not calling back on my resume, or after the first person to person interview. And you can start to analyze and say, maybe there's something I need to make some adjustments to. So, tracking where you are in phase for your own knowledge, but also for your process adjustment, incredibly important. That was 17. Take a deep breath. Thing. And we're going to move on to the very short but interviewing section because we have three more tips here. Always lots of research. Research into the company. Research, research, hardcore. So you have now mastered your art and your process and your resume is on point. You send it out to somebody and they say, great, we'd like to talk to you. We'd like to have this interview. Put everything else on hold. Put Change your schedule a little bit and be like, I need to spend three hours tomorrow just researching for this interview. And even build yourself a little bit of a checklist of these. Are, when I research for an interview, these are the questions I need to get the answers to. I've given you a lot of this information before on the research I think is important for an interview. You can see it in our other podcast episodes. But if you build yourself a format, you can say, for every interview, this is what I'm going to follow. These are the 10 questions I need to research and get answers answers to. And and if you do that each time consistently, the process becomes a lot easier as well. But doing it will build your comfort for the actual interview process. After that, number 19, follow up with employers if you don't hear back from them. So you're doing the interview, you haven't heard back from, reach out. Absolutely 100% reach out, ask questions about where we are in the process, um, that you're still very interested. If they have any further questions for you, and wanting to know the next steps in the process. Having that outreach is totally, totally acceptable. Number uh, 20. Oh my gosh, the last one. Always, always, always send a thank you letter or and or email after an interview. 
I say right afterwards, you send an email, a thank you email, and then drop a letter in the, in the mail so that they get that two or three days letter later. And if they get that two or three days later, what they are doing is thinking of you again. So they've, you've already appreciated them an email right afterwards. And then they're getting another warm touch point from you two or three days later with a card in the mail from you, uh, appreciating their time and, and really valuing the, and being interested in the position. Okay. Those are 20, 20 tips to help new grads with their job search. I'm going to give eight really quick ones for those of you that are building your career. Now you have that job lined up and you're ready to hit the ground running in the summer. Here's the eight things I want you to be focused on. Number one, get organized. You can't be the person that lets things slip through the cracks. You can't be the person that messes up on assignments or forgets to do things. Get more organized than you've ever been in your life. Number two, create daily to-do lists. Task yourself out, write things down, have a spreadsheet that denotes all of your projects and all those responsibilities. Give yourself daily, I need to deliver on these things, prioritize things. You need to be the person that delivers, not forgets. Number three, volunteer to be a meeting note taker. If you're in a meeting and you can volunteer and say, hey, I'll take notes, that again shows some proactivity and you're going to be more focused in the meeting and paying attention to what's being said because you don't want to miss anything. Number four, document your short and long-term goals. You should have a vision for the things you want to accomplish in three, six, and nine months. You start with it and then talk to your boss and say, this is what I've developed for my goals. What do you think about these? And then hold yourself accountable. This shows maturity and a forward look. Number five, ask questions. Ask lots of questions. Don't ever self-censor questions. I did this a lot. When I was first starting out, I self-centered. I was afraid to ask questions. Big mistake ask questions, be curious, always look for new ways to learn. Number six, listen more than you talk. Be an active listener. 80-20 rule, listen 80% of the time, talk 20% of the time. When you're first starting out, even smaller, a lot more listening, a lot less talking, okay? Number seven, hold yourself accountable. Do not be the blamer. I didn't get this done because X, Y, or Z. No, 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 no. Hold yourself accountable. Don't make excuses. Live up to those expectations. That's how you become somebody that's dependent upon. And the final one, number eight, treat everyone, everyone with respect. That sets the right culture. You are not better or worse than anyone. Treat everyone with respect. That is rapid fire. 28 all total tips for new grads in their job search or starting out your new job. I think that was pretty solid. Thanks for listening, everybody. We will be back on Monday. <laughs>